Hi, I'm Sylvia Gunnery, and we're here on the South Shore of Nova Scotia, where I live with my partner Jim and some wonderful critters that we live in the house with. And today, I'm really happy that I'm going to be in your classroom with you talking about writing. I've been writing for a very long time, oh, well, probably since I could maybe when I was about three and I could it would probably not even hold a pencil. I would tell stories to my sister at night and she would say, come on, shrimp, tell me a story. Well, of course she called me shrimp because I was younger. And Barb would read to me books like um, Black Beauty and Beautiful Joe. And so stories and words were always in my head and I loved them, but I didn't think that I would be a writer probably till I was about 30 because I thought writers had to be from the US or maybe New York. <laughs> maybe England. And then I read writers like Thomas Raddall and Hugh McLennan, two writers I could meet in their books, and I thought, you can be a writer and be for Nova Scotia. So in 1984, I published my first book for teens. I was teaching grade eight at the time, and I thought they don't have any stories that take place in their own place. And since 1984, I've written 24, 25, six, seven books for young people, a couple books for teachers on the topic of writing, and spent a career of 32 years teaching uh, grade seven to 12 and really enjoying it. So today I'm happy to be here in your classroom with you talking about writing. When you sit to write, maybe you're at a computer, maybe you're at a desk with paper, it's really very important that you write about what you care about. That's what I want to talk to you about today. So I'd like to talk to you about some of my books and you know, why I chose those topics, why I care about them, so you have a sense of what I'm saying when I say write about what you care about. Um, I have a series of basketball books that start with Out of Bounds, Personal Best, and the third in the series, Game Face. And as short as I am, at five foot four, I played basketball at junior high school, uh, high school in Halifax, and also at university, at Acadia University. So basketball is something I care about. And yet in these stories, there has to be more than just the game. And so let me take you to one of them, and um, you'll kind of see that I'm caring about basketball, but I'm also caring about friendships and, and some of the background scenes in basketball. So Game Face, uh, the character Jay, uh, who's in the first two books, of course, um, Jay has just been voted team captain. And, you know, for him, that's, he was surprised. Uh, and the trick of it is his very closest friend, um, was also nominated and didn't win. And so you've got the dynamic of friendship and friends are very important to me. And, and so in this case, I'm looking at Jay and seeing that he's in a bit, of a, a, a bit of a problem. So I take him down to visit his grandfather. He's got his kid brother with him and they're just gonna go down to a wharf, uh, kind of picture it near here, near my home, and uh, tell his grandfather about the fact that he's team captain. I'll start there. So his grandfather says to him, one thing I'll tell you about being captain, whether it's a boat captain or a basketball captain, it's not going to be what you say or what you do that'll cause trouble. It'll be someone else's idea of what you say or do. Now that's the truth as sure as I'm standing here. Jay picked up a short piece of braided twine, bright turquoise and frayed at the end. He spun it between his thumb and finger, watching the unraveled strands whirl. Didn't take too much imagination to see how the chunk of twine was like a warning to him as team captain. If he wasn't careful, his team could unravel and things would just spin out of control. When you're ready to bark out some orders, Captain Dad, let's get some more work done. I'll go on over to the house, said Gramp. You're almost done for the day. See you tomorrow. Thanks for the hand, said Moyle. Sam and Rudy ran ahead, but Jay kept a slower pace with his grandfather as they made their way back up the lane. Captain, huh? Gramps said. If the boys on your team give you their votes, then it looks like they agree with my opinion about the kind of captain you'll be. It was a close vote. Still and all, you're the team captain now, and there's no changing that. On the drive home, Jay... Jay's thoughts went back to the conversations about boat captains and team captains. He still had the braided twine in his hand. What's that bit of old twine, Jay? asked his father. 
Let me see, said Sam from the back seat. Rudy pushed his head forward in the off chance they were talking about something good to eat. It's nothing, Sam. Just afraid and cut off some lobster gear. I wanted to show you the twine. I was walking on the beach. It was winter. I was stuck. I didn't know what to do with this book. And the wind uh, was playing with the ends of this twine, and the rest of it was buried in the sand. And I was the only one on the beach. It was winter. <laughs> and when I pulled it up, by the time I stood up, I could picture Jay holding this. And I suddenly was outside the writer's block because I could see him thinking about his team. He's a team captain. And he cares about being a team captain. He wants this thing to work. And he's thinking, well, a rope doesn't work unless it's like this all together. And so I thought that was a nice uh, image to use in the book. And when I came back from the beach, I pretty much wrote him finding the twine and thinking about how his team is all fraying. So that was kind of fun. Now let's have a look at another book. Um, Road Signs That Say West is my most recent book, published in 2017. And this is about um, three sisters taking a trip, a kind of a spontaneous trip, across Canada. Now, my sister and I, when we were in our 20s, did a road trip across Canada with her German shepherd dog, Max. Uh, but this isn't the, that story. But it is a story of sisters. And so you can tell that where I have a sister and we had that trip, that's something I care about. And I still care about, of course. But I chose three sisters very different from my sister and myself. Um, Hannah, who's 19, uh, Megan, who's 17, and Claire, who's 15. And they all have their backstories, and each one I chose with things that I was interested or wondering about. Um, what I want to read to you today is a scene that is in this book, that it, it's really the only thing, well, maybe I took a couple small details, but it's the only whole scene that I took from the actual trip with my sister and me. And so, although all of this is happening between, Clara's sound asleep, she doesn't wake up, um, Hannah and Megan, basically happened to my sister and I, and remember her German shepherd dog was there. They don't have a dog, <laughs> tell you about that later. So this is chapter six of Road Signs That Say West. Something bumps against the picnic table. The candle jar falls over and rolls off without breaking. Megan opens her eyes. It's so dark, it's like she hasn't opened them at all. Hannah, stay very, very still. Hannah's voice is barely a whisper. Don't make a sound. Hannah doesn't have to tell her. She knows what it is. Her legs start to tremble uncontrollably. Shuffling sounds move away from the picnic table and come toward the tent. A low snuff, snuff. Megan doesn't breathe, tries to quiet the trembling. Her heart is pounding frantically. How can Claire be asleep? Snuff, snuff. Low along the ground, a small moan like a question. It's right there on the other side of the tent. Right there. Only thin fabric between them. An eternity of silence. Can she smell its rank breath? It moves toward the front of the tent, stops, then pads slowly, slowly away. A twig cracks in the underbrush. Rustling sounds go further and further into the woods until they can't be heard anymore. It's gone, says Hannah, still whispering. It might come back. I think it'll just keep going. She doesn't say until it finds food. I can't stop shaking. Take a couple of deep breaths. Megan gulps in air. I was so scared. You were amazing, Megan. Really, really, really amazing. Hannah, what? Don't make this a joke, I promise. In the actual scene, my sister and Max woke, and I didn't, until I heard, you know, like when you write in a book and you say, it's right there on the other side of the tent. It's right there. And I woke, and it was right there. 
And my sister was patting Max, and she was saying, it's OK, Max. It's OK. It's OK. And Max stayed absolutely still. It was amazing to think of. And my sister and I stayed absolutely still. And I was the one with the legs trembling. And when I wrote the word uncontrollably, I thought I wanted to write a more fantastic word because uncontrollably seemed so simple, when really, like, my legs were just moving, and I couldn't do anything about it. So in writing this story of three sisters, it starts with my sister and me and how we journeyed. And this little incident was able to come into the book. And I remember being there with her. And that brought really good energy into the book, too, I think. So now I'd like you to have a chance to think about, well, what would you write about? Well, we know we're talking about write about what you care about. And so I'm going to have my journal and a pen. And maybe your teacher might just want to press pause on the video and give you some time to get to a computer or to get a pen and paper. Um, and then we'll keep on going. So everybody set? The way to come to what you care about is not difficult at all. Basically, it's, it's what you've been thinking about a lot lately. It's the kind of stuff that preoccupies your thinking when you're in a crowd or you're by yourself. And, um, and the idea of, of caring, if, if you didn't care, you wouldn't spend the time thinking about it. And so I'm going to ask you um, on your computer or on your paper to make a list of three numbers. And I'll make them on mine, a one. And I'm going to skip some space, a two and a three. And it's just, it's just numbers, one, two, three. And I'm going to ask you in each number to s write something different that you've thought about lately. Or it could be something you observed in other people, um, something about, you know, something you read about, something you saw on c TV, something that you just have been thinking about. So write three separate things down. Just a sentence, a, it doesn't have to be a sentence, a word, a phrase, um, and I'll, I'll do it with you. So we can pause and have a few minutes to do this, but it shouldn't take long, like half a minute. So I have my three um, things that I've been thinking about, wondering about, preoccupied with maybe. Some of them. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you can see the words I have, but you can see that I've written something. Just a little scribble, not even a whole sentence. And what I want you to do next is to scribble out only the numbers, not the words you wrote, but scribble out the number one, scribble out the number two, and scribble out the number three. Now, the reason you're doing this is because you're having a brainstorm. And so you're saying, OK, um, these are three things I've been thinking about, wondering about, caring about. Um, well, which one are you interested in now? You know, it may not have been the first idea you thought of. Sometimes uh, it takes you a while before you tune into exactly what you really, really want to write about right now. And so I see mine, one, two, three, and I'm now going to renumber them. Um, number two is now number one for me. And number one is number two, and number three stays the same. So that's how it worked for me. Take a second to think of which is the first thought that you have, something that you would, if you're going to start writing right away today, which is the one you'd write about. Switch your numbers around. So I had as my first idea the gardens. I love gardening. And so I was thinking about the gardens. I don't want to write about weeding, so it's not my first one now. <laughs> The second idea was the idea of meeting friends. I mean, with all the isolation, even my closest neighbors, we haven't been getting together. So the idea of meeting with friends becomes number one. That's what I'm thinking about right now. And the third one was travel plans that were canceled. Last year, I was supposed to be in Germany in October. And I didn't get there. <laughs> but I'm not, that's not what I want to write about today. So what I, what I would like to write about today is the idea of meeting friends. In fact, if I start this, which we won't, do, we won't do together in this video, but if I were starting this right now, I'd begin with something I did today. I was down on the beach near our house 
where you saw me when we started the video, and I was making a, a, a fire pit because my friends, my neighbors on either side, are going to come and we're going to have a fire. So just some evening together, probably a couple days from now, when the rain isn't going to threaten us. And um, I, that's what I'd start writing about. Now, I'm not going to plan it. I just begin to write it. Because what I care about will show up in how I write it. So you now have three ideas. You've numbered them one, two, and three. You've planned them yourself. You, they've, they've come from you. Somebody else didn't give you those ideas. They're yours. It's something you've been thinking about. So you've got an idea to start writing. Start writing now. Thanks. I hope everybody has a really good chance to explore this writing that they care about.